I wanted to start with Brian and say, Brian, can you, um, can you give us a high level kind of view on kind of the real estate outlook? Sure, ab absolutely. So, you know, to be clear, these are my thoughts and not necessarily those of my colleagues at the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, nor the Board of Governors in DC. But if you look at the economy right now, um, you know, we, we have had a, a number of, you know, uh, sports analogies and people continue to ask, you know, what inning are we in? And, you know, I've kind of begun to respond with, you know, this is the longest seventh inning ever. <laughs> Truly. And, and you know, it, it really is. I mean, you have, you know, solid, healthy economy. Uh, you have healthy growth. You have, uh, you know, very low unemployment. You're beginning to see some of the wage growth that you would expect in a low unemployment environment beginning to kind of percolate. And then what you asked me to talk about as far as commercial real estate is concerned is you know, commercial real estate lags the overall economy. And so as the economy does well, commercial real estate follows. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing commercial real estate where you know, the dynamics are very healthy in apartments, in some instances a little too healthy in, in that we have a shortage <laughs> of uh, affordable housing, which is you know, a, a significant conversation that we're weighing into as, as we speak. I think you, know, you look at, at the way that the market is morphing across you know, industrial, whether it's e-commerce, whether we're beginning to talk about drones. And so technology is having a, a very you know, impact on commercial real estate and it's changing the way that, that we're using it across the spectrum, whether it's malls, whether it's office, whether, whether it's industrial. So I think that, you know, to your question, you know, the economy is healthy right now. And, and we're certainly, you know, kind of forecasting for 2020 that, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, continued stable growth. We'll continue to see uh, unemployment levels that are, you know, uh, atypically, atypically low, which is certainly good news. At the same point, you know, there are, you know, some, some uh, you know, possible headwinds. Uh, certainly, uh, you look at, uh, you know, what's going on overseas right now. And I think we've got a uh, tailwind in a, you know, first phase of manufacturing agreement. At the same point, we know that the Chinese economy is experiencing some headwinds and probably will continue to experience those headwinds as part of, as part of the you know, dynamics in trying to contain the coronavirus right now. So I think that there are some areas that we need to you know, continue to watch. Um, certainly, there is an election this year, and the Fed is, is apolitical, but we've had a number of business contacts talk to us and, and say, you know, we can, we can operate, um, you know, whether it's the red team or the blue team winning, but certainly there is a significant divide right now and the uncertainty that that creates, you know, begins to kind of encourage some of the businesses they've told us that they're taking a little bit a longer approach to make, you know, some investment decisions right now.